Hey there guys, welcome to a new exciting episode of Let's Play Imperishable Night. Today we're going to play a new stage, finally. The extra stage, of course. Having beaten the game on harder than normal difficulty without continuing, we can play one other level. So I'm going to change my characters a bit and play this with the Scarlet Devil team. Uh, Sakuya on the human side and Mamelia on the yokai, phantom, whatever side. Uh, Sakuya is not a very good character by any means. She has a decent spread and that's about it. She doesn't move too fast like uh, Marissa or Yomu, but uh, there's nothing much to say about her. However, Romilia is a very interesting character because of what I said in uh, episode 0, so I won't say it again. Um, the plot for this thing is uh, even uh, more simple than the plot for other extra stages. Uh, so, after the main game, everyone became friends because uh, that's, that's how it works in the Toho universe, and uh, Kaguya decided to send well to make a challenge to uh, all the hero teams whatever and send them on the trial of guts so we're going back in the bamboo forest and uh, something's going to happen we have no idea actually that's a bit strange uh, and uh, yeah I find the extra boss quite hard in this game compared to most of the other ones, and uh, let's just go ahead and go! Uh, like every other extra stage, this starts with home, uh, aimed bullets, which are simple to dodge. Notice that I, the way I started the thing, you, it's you, I basically positioned myself on the, the three at the bottom left of the screen there, and it's exactly the best place to kill those opening enemies. can't even remember what they are. Anyway, the stage... It, it's really not hard. Once you know that you don't need to be scared of those aimed bullets, of course. Lots of familiars to destroy, lots of point items to get. It's all fun and games. This part, try to kill them fast, but it's never very dangerous. Here it's just sort of streaming like things. More aim shots, wow, gee. It might look scary, but it's never dangerous at all if you just keep moving in the same direction. And that's it for the first half of the stage. Now, mid-boss is going to appear. It's Kaina again, but since we're on the full moon, she transformed into a Hakutaku. Uh, some kind of demon. Notice her horns. She's an is easy extra stage mid-boss, but I suck at her. So I'm going to do this the cheap way, using Remilia's, uh familiars which stay in place. And only have to dodge the first wave. And now, second spell card. This one is very fun. It's simple dodging. By simple I don't mean easy, I just mean it's pure. And the third spell card, man this is fast. It's a bit like the first one. Stream the red things while dodging the blue white things. I, ha I actually practiced this stage quite a lot uh, just to prepare for this video because uh, my last few rounds weren't very success successful, let's put it like that. Well, not the stage, but the boss, boss parts. <laughs> and at least. This thing, just focus and have the exploding familiars destroy most of the bullets. And... Oh, that part. This is a fun part. Hard, of course. So you've got some sort of streaming like things, then they've got vertical pillars of bullets, and now is the way it gets really hard. 
we got more streaming inside those purple things. And yeah, I did it. Happy about that. And this ends with more of those weird fairies. And a death fairy! The death fairy of Imperishable Night. You can sort of safe spot it. I just usually tackle it straight on. And I usually can capture it. Didn't do it there. Too bad. But it's a, f it's a fun thing to dodge. It's not much of a trial of guts. <clears throat> Ooh, who's talking? There's our extra boss. Her name's going to appear. Fujiwara no Moko. Just a fancy way of saying that her first name is Moko and her, se and her last name is Fujiwara. Um, she's another immortal girl who drank the elixir of immortality. However, she's not a Lunarian, she's just a normal human. And she hates Kaguya. Basically because Kaguya refused to marry her father. Um, that's pretty much the only thing to say about her. Uh, like I said, and I'm going to say a lot, she's a hard fight. Uh, almost all of her attacks are themed around immortality. And actually, the way the game shows it, it seems that we actually sort of kill her after every spell card because then she used something called resurrection. Uh, so she can't actually lose a fight since she's immortal. However, she can give up when it starts hurting too much. It's a bit strange. Uh, apparently, yeah, there's. Absolutely no way you can kill them. You could, you can cook her in an oven and then eat her. She would still be alive and reform her body. I'm not sure how it works. And uh, one thing about this boss is that her non-spells are more dangerous than uh, the average extra state non-spell. Of course, harder than Flandre because the, her non-spells were just ridiculously easy. But the last few ones need fast reading skills, which are, yeah, not easy to have. Uh, what else is there to say? Nothing particular. I hope you're reading the dialogue. Because I'm not, because I'm saying lots of stuff. Yeah. And I'm going to fight. So, like every extra boss, she has about 10 spell cards and 8 non-spells. She also has a last spell, which I think is one more than the usual stuff. And yes, we are figuring out that uh, Kaguya actually sent us to fight against Moko just because they have been rivals for 1300 years. And uh, even though they know that there's no way they can fight, fight and do anything because they'll never kill each other. Uh... <laughs> Woo. And now let's go. The first half of the fight is is much e is is easy. First spell cards, except maybe the very first one, are not much of a challenge. But the second half is hard. Also, the reason why Remilia is very good for this stage, I mentioned it earlier. Her non-moving familiars are very useful because there's lots of attacks like this one which make you move around a lot while the boss doesn't move around a lot. Which means that you can beat stuff much faster. Also, all her non-spells involve Rimu's amulets. Don't know where she found them, but she can use them in very different ways than Rimu does. Yeah. Firebird Flying Phoenix. This is misdirection. Misdirected. Rather. And I actually. Okay, fine. So, sometimes it's a bit hard staying under her, but just be patient for that. If you're doing the misdirecting properly, you can. It's very easy to beat this attack. And yeah, this is, is a sort of typical extra attack in that if you don't know that you're supposed to misdirect it, then you're going to have a whole lot of trouble beating it. 
I remember just failing constantly the first few times and then I found the trick probably on some YouTube video and then I never failed it again. 